if it amazes me. I just people are the most interesting characters around. I never really completely understand them. Sometimes I'm just dumbfounded by some of the things that happen in my life as I watch them. I was uh, recording outside. It was like a beautiful sunny day. The wind's blowing, so the skies are just beautiful blue. It's a strong wind. It's not too cold. I mean, it's a north wind, but it's a little chilly, but it's okay. So I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be a beautiful day. And some guy fires up his blower or his sucker, whichever you want to call it. And he's either sucking up leaves or blowing leaves. Now, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I'm thinking, in a windstorm with the 30 mile an hour wind, do I really want to be out blowing leaves around? <laughs> no, please. Do I really want to be out sucking up leaves with a 30 mile an hour windstorm. <laughs> I don't know. There are things about the human condition that when we say that there's some things that we just don't understand about God and we'll know when we get there, we really won't because we don't have the capacity to know. I can tell you this, there's enough about humanity that we don't know that <laughs> We'll never understand the human condition. Whew, I don't know. But, you know, because I don't know, I accept the fact that I have to adapt or go with the flow, so to speak, of whatever God wants to do when these circumstances pop up, when somebody is, <laughs> I don't know, spitting in the wind? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. It almost makes me think of that song, you know, you don't spit into the wind, you don't pull the cape off the old Lone Ranger, or you don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger, and you don't mess around with Jim. I keep thinking, two days in a row, we've had a windstorm, and both days, I've had people blowing leaves or sucking up leaves. I, I just don't get that part, you know. And they only do it for a little while, because then you go back to see where and what they did, and I go like this, I just kind of go, really? You just got done blowing them around and sucking them around? Really? Looks like they're still there. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm being legalistic and I think that, you know, it's kind of dumb to spit in the wind or suck up leaves or blow leaves on a windy day. <sighs> Maybe that's legalism. <laughs> I don't think so, though. But God has taught me through the years to not be affected by those things that are external, but rather deal with the internal reality of being a born-again Christian, that irregardless of what goes on outside my world, I can always share what's going on inside my life with those around me, because it doesn't matter whether I sit outside and enjoy the sunshine or just walk out there to hear the blower blowing, you know, that I can still come in here and I can record, I can share the devotionals that God has given me to lay upon my heart to, to participate with you and I in as he speaks to both of us. You know, so really you just need to trust the Lord that it doesn't matter those things. Those are externals. Like if your sound system goes off or your worship leader suddenly, you know, his guitar comes unplugged, does, does worship end? It shouldn't. You should just stop, put the guitar down, and keep singing. Wow, who cares? You don't need a PA system. <laughs> you don't need to have a microphone. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you're soft. That's soft spoken, but me, I can project. But a lot of these outward, external things aren't the important things. It's the interim. It's kind of like when people tell me about somebody that can't get saved. They're always looking on the outward things. They say, Oh, well, that person's famous, so, you know, we hate them because they got more than we do. Or, oh, that person's famous, so, you know, they had this, that, and the other thing, so they can't be getting close to being saved. But, you see, they, whoever they are, when they judge people, are always looking on the outward things. 
God says he looks on the inward things. So I think, whether it be in circumstances of life, in love, in relationships, in marriages, in broken marriages, in children, in rebellious children, in exes, in halves, in adopted, in non-adopted, none of that is important because it's all external. That's all out there. It's not the things that out there are going to affect you. It's what you did with them inside that affects you. Because you see, all those outward things could create in you hatred, malice, wrath, anger, maliciousness, sin, backbiting, gossip, bitterness, you name it. All the negative aspects that are just yuck, from God, instead of being peace, love, joy, meekness, kindness, temperance, gentleness, faithfulness, perseverance, endurance, love. Those internal things are what God wants for you and to accomplish in you because when you leave this body behind with all that external garbage, you're going to heaven with the internal fruit. So whatever your circumstances are, don't let that be dictating to you who God is or what God is or how God works. It's the internal. It's being born again of the Spirit. It's being led by the Spirit of God in you, not out here, that makes a difference. The people, when they came to Mount Sinai, it's an interesting thing. They're all brought up to the mountaintop, you know, a mountain, and Moses goes up on top, and then all of a sudden they hear thunder and lightning, and the Bible records that they saw lightning, and they, you know, they saw thunder, and they heard lightning. Now, it's not a mistake on the words, because the rabbis teach that you could do that, is that, you know, there's a certain amount of aspect and truth to that, and then later on we found out in science that's also true, but the point being is that each one of them heard something different, but then here's one fascinating thing. It adds at the end of that also, and some heard the voice of God. So, on the one hand, maybe those who were close to God heard his voice, but those that were farther from God only saw lightning. Those that were farther from God only heard thunder. Those that were farthest probably thought, well, there's a great wonder going on over that mountain, you know, but we got to go check it out, but I'm not going near it. But Moses was up in the presence of God, enjoying fellowship and talking and relating to God back and forth. So the reality of what goes on outside is a perspective issue. But what happens inside is the reality of God speaking to you. That's why God speaks in a still small voice in you, so that you would begin to hear him. Now, he can speak externally, and he has. He's spoken to me externally, and man, that blew my mind. I mean, I know why he did, you know, at the time, I mean, I should say this. I know why he did then, I know why he did for the future, and I know why he did and allows me to share it. And that was simply so that people couldn't say that they can't hear God's voice, because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, and, you know, they will not follow the voice of another. But... At the time, also, I needed him specifically to share some very personal things that he did. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> nobody else knew. You know, boom, man, I was, from that moment on, I won't say healed, but, you know, definitely I had something that was unique and distinctive that only God and I have, you know, that I enjoyed and it needed, I, it was needful for me at that point in time in my life. And so, God uses those things to internally bring externally the change. But if you take the external and put it internal, then most of the time it's from the world and it's the world in its ways and it's going to cause you to decline, not rise up above the world. So be careful about letting circumstances ruin your life, letting outward things manifest who you are or determine what you think God is. Because it's not the outward things. It is the inward man who is being renewed day by day, being changed into the incorruptible image of his son. Trust God, but let all those who take refuge put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout for joy, because you have made a covering over them and defend them. 
Let those also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits, from Psalm 511. Many wounded people don't know how to get what they really need, so they wallow in self-pity. God once told me, Joyce, you can be pitiful or powerful, but you can't be both. Joyce Myers, starting your day. Taking your eyes off of ourselves enables us to look to God. This positions us to trust Him to meet every need in our lives. God knows exactly what we need, and He promises to provide it through His abundant grace and mercy. Ask Him to fill you with His power today and trust Him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. I hear, see, and experience too much of people who seem to have a relationship that is religious but not personal. In other words, it's distant from God but not intimate with God because they seem to want to tell everyone else about how bad it is for them rather than tell everyone else, watch and see how God's going to deliver me. I don't ever see what we used to have in the Jesus movement, this whole idea of, oh man, check it out, I just lost my job and this is exciting, I don't know what I'm going to do, but you know what, I got, I got trust. I got faith and I got joy in Jesus that he's going to come through. He's going to deliver me because he's promised that he is my provider. He's going to show me the way. He's going to teach me the path. He's going to take me through the circumstance. And I'm going to rejoice in the way that he's come through because I know my God and he will provide for me in all ways and all my needs. So though I got fired or though that job has terminated, I know my God will provide for me. No, what I hear now is, oh, pray for me, please. Post this on your Facebook page. Oh, God, repost it 10,000 times so that I know somebody out there cares, because after all, God doesn't. Please, get a grip. I mean, I've actually had to tell people on the Internet, you know, a few times on Facebook, look, you know, telling everyone you're problems isn't exactly posting praise for God delivering you from yourself as well as from your issues you think are more important. The issue isn't out here. The issue is in here. Do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? Do you lean on your own understanding? In all your ways are you acknowledging him and is he directing your path? Because if you're whining and crying, complaining and begging and pleading and asking for everyone else to pray for you, you're not trusting. Hello? Could have had a V8. Could have had Jesus. Could have had God supernaturally come down and perform a miracle for you. Instead, no, I gotta spread it all over Facebook and wait for somebody out there to answer for me what God won't do to me because he's gonna let someone else do it so you got your reward and he doesn't get the glory. You think I'm kidding? 90% of what I see, and I see a lot on the internet, is a bunch of whining Christians acting like they don't have any faith in a real God, but that the majority of what their faith is based upon is what they get, what they feel, and what somebody does for them. It has nothing to do with what God can do. Oh, they give credit to God after the fact, but they don't rejoice in it before. They don't take James as serious. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that working in faith produces patience, but let patience have perfect work. That the man of God might be perfectly equipped to do every good work. Your glory to God in the highest, you know, peace for his people on earth. But rather what they do is they go, oh no, you know, God has to use somebody's hands. He doesn't have any. God has to use somebody's feet. He doesn't have any. God has to use somebody else's faith because God doesn't have any. God can't meet my needs, but I have to say that, you know, please, brother, pray for me because I really want them to pray for me that God would come through in some way that some brother or sister will come about and give it to me. If your God is about getting, and it comes from an outside source, it's not coming from in here, is it? You reap what you sow. You get what you ask for. If God tells you, I will supply your needs, what are you doing asking everybody else for? Whether you do it sneakily or in reality. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, you don't need to ask anyone anything. You need to talk to God about it and let Him deliver you. 
My wife has learned a very important lesson in respect to that. She has watched and seen what I do in every situation and circumstance. And I won't run to some other instant source of supply for my need unless I first have asked God where, what, and how should I do it. In other words, yes, there are times where you cut your finger. You don't say, well, God, I got a cut finger. Should I go to the doctors? No, you go to the doctors and you pray along the way. God, please stop the bleeding, you know, while you're going to the doctor so you can stitch it up. But at the same time, you don't automatically go to telling everyone to watch how much I can whine, cry, beg, plead, convince, connive, scam, spam my prayer requests, and then never come back and do the same amount of effort to thank God for it. I have never seen ever in any of these let's post it on Facebook routines where the person has come back after spamming it, after scamming it, after telling everyone to post it on their Facebook page or their wall or their, their this, that or the other thing. I've never ever yet, now it'll happen, but haven't yet. Been a while. But it'll happen, you already know, because God always does that. You can't say never, ever, because God will do something, you know, to keep you from being, you know, like putting in a box. But so far, up to this date, I've never seen anyone come back and say, you know what, after spamming this, scamming it, and putting it all over Facebook, let me, with as much gusto and, and pushiness and attitude, tell you all how God took care of it and how God came through and your prayers were answered and this is what God did and let me spam that and scam it and tell everyone to post it on their wall. No. Because it's not from the inward, which that would have been to the outward, but it's always from the outward to the inward that the person is trying to fill this emptiness inside that they have because they haven't started from the inside and worked out their salvation. They haven't brought out Jesus who's in you to live and to breathe and to speak and to cause you to know the direction you should go because he wants you to know him personally, not Facebook corporally. Now, once he knows you and you know him personally, he may take you to Facebook to be corporally sharing what God has done in you and with you and for you. But notice the difference. God in you, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, God doing this so that you could share it with others, the same experience you have had. That's what it's all about. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about everything we see, but it's about his glory, his son, his will being done in you that comes out of you. Otherwise, it's all just a waste of time. Because salvation is personal. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not about all your church, and it's not about all the people, and it's not about everything external. It is about what's internal and inside you that's going to remain and go to be with Jesus.